Welcome to Introverts Own Your Voice. I'm Tom Marcoux. And I'm Johanna McLeod. This episode is about the power of, oh crap, I'm stuck. Tom, you have the power of, oh crap, I'm stuck. How does that fit together? It seems like it doesn't fit. And it's very understandable because when we're in an oh crap moment, we feel very vulnerable. The power of the oh crap moment is it's a doorway, mm -hmm. a doorway to innovation, disruption, and creation. Mm -hmm. When you get to that doorway of oh crap, I'm stuck, what happens is you have to respond. A lot of people react and that's not powerful. The power of oh crap, I'm stuck is when you're ready for these oh crap moments. Now there are two types of oh crap moments. One is predictable. If you get in front of an audience, you're giving a speech, you're likely to get stuck. Mm -hmm. So you can predict that mm -hmm. and you can also be ready for it. And that's why when I work with my clients, I have them use recovery methods. Mm -hmm. They're ready for this. Mm -hmm. The other type of oh crap moment is what I call the blindsided oh crap moment. I'll give you an example. It's 9 p.m. I'm in San Francisco Telegraph Hill neighborhood, a Ford F-150 truck smashes my sweetheart's little Toyota truck. Oh, wow. Now, the little Toyota truck was parked. We're from like half a block away or so. We're going mm -hmm. towards this calamity. Mm -hmm. That big Ford F-150 truck, the driver has it go back and hit and smash the little Toyota truck again. Oh my gosh. I start walking real fast down the center of the street. Because this guy, having done this stuff, is starting to do a hit and run thing. He's trying to get oh, wow. away. So I'm going down the center of the street. And my sweetheart, she's smart. She's walking down the sidewalk <laughs> because she's sane and rational. Mm -hmm. You got to understand that it's not just the property, but actually it wasn't her truck. It was her parents' truck. Uh -uh. I wanted to protect her from all the emotional trouble of, we let you drive our truck. Now, this is 18 years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to protect her feelings. I'm running down the center of the street. Mm -hmm. This truck does a turn and it hits me right in the chest. Oh! I actually literally got stuck. I'm actually holding on to the hood and my feet are off the cement. Oh my gosh. This is what I call blindsided oh crap moment. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way that I knew before that night that I was going to be stuck on the hood of some crazy guy, mm -hmm. evil or crazy or both. Mm -hmm. Now the thing is, later on when talking about this, you know, I was really wanting to protect my sweetheart from emotional trouble mm -hmm. with her parents. But you know, would I do that today? No, <laughs> I like life. I could have fallen off the hood and I could have been run over. Oh. Eventually the guy stopped driving the truck. Oh, thank goodness for then that. He, then he threatened me with his dog, saying this is an attack dog. Oh, jeez. And then the attack dog looked at me, looked back at him, and like, attack dog where? <laughs> Who's an attack dog? The, the dog really wasn't an attack dog. Mm -hmm. But this guy was evil, crazy, both. By the way, later on, you know, I said, well, you must give me credit. I mean, I wanted to protect you, right? Yeah, and she said, yeah, you're my knight in shining stupid. <laughs> That's 18 years ago. I'm much wiser now. <laughs> My point is this, that's a blindsided oh crap moment. Other moments, as we already talked about, are predictable oh crap moments. Mm -hmm. We can get ready for them both. How do you get ready for a predictable oh crap moment? What you do is you prepare. My clients always know I talk about words, strategy, and rehearsal. I find the words inside them. Now let me give you an example. If you're stuck in front of an audience and you don't know what to say next, you can say, I need to pause for a moment. At IBM, I got stuck and I said, I need to pause for a moment. My brain needs more RAM. <laughs> That's good for the tech folks. A random access memory joke. Oh, wow. <laughs> How fun is that? But the thing is, I look for the words that my client will express. Mm -hmm. For example, I was teaching at a particular university. I was working with the students, preparing them with uh, public speaking, mm -hmm. having them come up with their own way. I need to pause for a moment the idea. You've got to find your own words. I've used in the past, I need to pause for a moment. My train of thought derailed. Mm. I'm looking for a crane. <laughs> you find your own words. So words, strategy, rehearsal. The strategy here is you never look like you're upset 
or you're in trouble or uncomfortable. If you look upset, in trouble or uncomfortable, then your audience is going to have trouble too. Mm -hmm. So we prepare for predictable oh crap moments. Mm -hmm. The idea of losing your place, not knowing what to say next in a speech, mm -hmm. how to recover from that. Mm -hmm. One could even recover, and this does happen, even on Broadway, when someone's doing a play and they forget a line. Let's say it's a really intense scene and the person is supposed to be saying certain things, they forget the next line. And they might even say, you may see me right now being angry. And by the time they finish saying that, they'll remember the next line. Oh. The point is not to just stand there. Uh -huh. Deer caught in the headlights going, <gasps> uh, er, arg. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. What you want to do is prepare for your predictable old crap moments. Tom, I have another question. Mm -hmm. How can I create more stability and less oh crap? That's the interesting part about the power of oh crap, I'm stuck. We're not really looking only for stability. We're looking for taking you to the edge but with having things like word strategy and rehearsal to help you almost like have a safety harness. I also like to talk about safety supports. For example, if I'm doing a book, I'm gonna have people look at it because I want the safety supports. But I do wanna to get to the edge because and that's where the old oh crap moments are. Mm -hmm. Remember I said old oh crap moments give you the doorway to innovation, disruption, and creation. Mm -hmm. So that's one detail. But we do, if we are looking for stability, or let's just say we are looking for some form of kind of safety, what we're looking for is to have your recovery methods in place. So that if you're in a situation, let's say someone asks you a tough question and you don't know how to answer it, mm -hmm. then you can say, oh, George, I see that's important to you. I need to pause for a moment because I want to make sure that my response is valuable to you. Ah. During that whole time, your subconscious mind is looking for the answer. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite moments as a speaker was when someone said, what do I do? I have a boss who never listens to me. I think we have a few of those at my place too. Okay, well, the challenge is we need to find how to respond and give a good answer when you have no answer. I had no answer. I was looking forward to hearing what I would say next. <laughs> so I said, I need to pause for a moment. I want my response to be valuable to you. Did it work? Oh, yes. Well, what happened was while I said that, immediately I got the answer. And here's the answer. What you do with a boss who will not listen to you is you quote something that boss had said previously mm. to them. Mm -hmm. Hey, boss, you know how last week you said the one, two, three? Yeah, of course I did. Well, if we add ABC to it, it's going to be even better. Oh, all right. Do that. Mm -hmm. Do you see how that goes? Getting the pause so that you can think and sound articulate while the whole situation is going on mm -hmm. is how we prepare for a predictable oh crap moment in front of an audience. Let's go back to that blindsided oh crap moment. Specifically, the one that I was talking about where I'm in a situation I never was in before, mm -hmm. which is that my sweetheart is in trouble because the truck she borrowed from her parents is being smashed and the person in the Ford F-150 truck is trying to run from the scene. Mm -hmm. Now, getting in front of that truck, being anywhere near in front of that truck was a stupid idea. Night and shining stupid. Yeah. So it would have been even better if I could have gotten into the bed of the truck. Mm -hmm. At least I would not be in front of it. The challenge is people always see in the, the TV shows that someone memorizes the license plate. Yeah, I don't know That's if hard. people can do that. Well, only television detectives apparently. The point is that's hard. So if I was going to do something, I could have done something else. But here's the answer about being prepared for a blindsided oh crap moment. Mm -hmm. You have to prepare a buffer of energy and attention. Let me explain this. I was talking with a client and I said, look, you sound rather stressed out. Now, if we're going to look at this, some people, they ideally will work at the level of 90% so that they have a 10% buffer because you're gonna get surprised any work day if you have at least 10% of the time worked out so that the surprise stuff happens and you can handle it. Mm -hmm. That's great. I talked with her about the 
that you're focused on and then a 10% buffer. That's how you deal with the blindsided oh crap moments is you have this buffer of attention and energy. I did much better when I was directing a feature film and I was on the set at this airport, San Luis Obispo Airport. Mm -hmm. I was completely blindsided by a situation where the camera operator is out of position and the wing of an American Ego plane is going straight to his head. Mm -hmm. So I saw this, I quickly realized that if I called out, hey, he would say, what, pow, it's a hit in the head. So instead I ran over there and I pulled him down, grabbed him by the jacket, and the wing cut the air over both our heads. Oh, wow. I was able to be ready for that blindsided old crap moment because I had prepared and I had a 10% buffer. The 10% buffer was created by my doing all these storyboards. So I knew exactly what I was filming that day. Yes. So my head was not buried while we're filming in a binder. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is also important too for any film director or person in a tough situation like this. I wasn't just looking at monitors. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the whole set to see what's going on. And this is an interesting situation because if you just look at what's on screen, this is why the camera operator was in trouble. He was only looking through the eyepiece of the film camera. Yes. And so he wasn't noticing that he was standing too tall. So he would be hit. Uh -huh. My point is that by doing all my storyboards, all my preparation, and having my eyes look all over the set to see what's going on, because my number one job is to keep everybody safe. Mm -hmm. I had never been on the tarmac, on a runway, with an American Eagle plane at San Luis Obispo Airport. I'd never done that before. And I haven't done that since either. <laughs> But I had never done that before, but I did my job. I kept everybody safe. This is what we need for the blindsided oh crap moments. We need to prepare so that we have the buffer of attention and energy. If I was dead tired, if I had no sleep, if I had no nutrition, if I was upside down, I might not have been able to run over there in time to pull him down and make sure that he stayed safe. Mm -hmm. So here's another thing that I, I want to talk about. I kind of learned about this idea of looking at the whole situation back in college. I went to a senior. I still was probably a junior at the time. Mm -hmm. But I went to a senior and I said, look, I've got my final exam in live television mm -hmm. happening. What do you suggest? And he says, look at the monitors. Look at the monitors. Don't bury your head in the script. So what I did to prepare was I put up pieces of paper with a drawing on each piece of paper as a monitor. So then I looked up at the monitors. I practiced physically getting my body used to this, looking up at the monitors, not keeping my head looking down at the script. This helped because during the live television show that I was directing, when the camera was on a different part of the set, a framed image mm -hmm. fell down. Oh, wow. So what I did was I said, let's go to commercial. And then during the commercial, put that image back up. Uh -huh. Because I was looking at all the monitors, not with my head buried in the script. I was able to respond and handle the stress. Mm -hmm. But that's the point. You need to prepare so that you have this buffer of attention and energy. That's what counts. Tom, what are the three best tips you can give to deal with oh crap moments? Now I might exceed the three details you're looking for. Go for it. First, we start off with the predictable oh crap moments. Mm -hmm. Words, strategy, rehearsal. So that's what we do with predictable oh crap moments. Mm -hmm. You know that if you're gonna be on stage speaking that you might get stuck and you might not know what to say next. So mm -hmm. you have a recovery method as I already talked about earlier. By the way, I recommend that anyone listening to this episode, you can always start over and listen to it again <laughs> so that you can really make this part of you. But that's also part of how we get ready. We go over the material, we rehearse it out loud. This is crucial for the predictable oh crap moment. For the blindsided oh crap moment, what we do is we make sure we develop that buffer of attention and energy, which means that we make sure, I mean, I log my sleep. My target is always to sleep more than seven hours. The idea is that if I don't do that, then I'm running at a deficit. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I might be stopping myself to have that buffer of attention and energy. Mm -hmm. To prepare for the blindsided oh crap moment, we're talking about sleep, exercise, nutrition, time away so that you re can recover and refresh yourself. Mm -hmm. All of those things go into that. Maybe meditation, at least quiet time, 
maybe prayer time, whatever it is to keep you strong and healthy, mm -hmm. that's how you'll be able to function at your best. I often say being prepared for the worst often gets you the best. Oh, clever. Well, thank you. The detail, though, is that it's rehearsal, preparation, getting your words together. Mm -hmm. These are the things that help you be ready for either type mm -hmm. of oh crap moment. Mm -hmm. And let's remember that the power of oh crap, I'm stuck, is that you're getting yourself right out there on the cutting edge. You're getting yourself right out there to explore and discover and then you're ready for expressing yourself mm -hmm. and your team perhaps mm -hmm. with innovation, creation, and also ready for disruption because disruption is coming, whatever mm -hmm. situation you're in. What I say when I'm coaching people how to pitch better or I'm helping them move their whole company along, getting everything together, whether launching new brands or things like that, you need to get into the arena you need to see what happens in the marketplace. You need to be able to be flexible and adapt quickly. And that's why you need to be prepared for old oh crap, I'm stuck moments. We can't let ourselves run down because when you're run down, you're easily distracted. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say somebody stays up too late. They're run down, their willpower wears out like a muscle, mm -hmm. and then they ate perfectly at breakfast, and then now they're into the ice cream and cookies and cake and everything at two o'clock in the morning. Mm, brownies. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> My point though is that we have to monitor ourselves. We are our own best asset. So we need to take care of ourselves. So Joanna, what are you going to keep with you from this conversation? The best thing that I can take away from this is to have a phrase that you would say, to get you out of trouble. Oh, excellent. I, I'm with you. That's well said. Thank you. We'd like to share that we have an online class called the Introverts Formula to Get Clients. The next class with some space still available is in January 2019. So if you want to pre-enroll, you can go to getthebigyes.com and click on the contact and send us a message. Once again, that's getthebigyes.com. We're glad that you heard this broadcast and we invite you to click to subscribe. And then you'll be supporting me and Joanna and our message. And so now remember, introverts can show their best self with strategy. I'm Johanna McLeod. I'm Tom Marcuth. Thank you. Be well. Bye.